Hello. Hi. How are you today? <laughs> good, good. Uh, I'm Laz. I'm a professional fashion photographer, commercial photographer, and filmmaker. This is Gabe. Hi. From I'm Camera Pro. Gabriel from Camera Pro. This is Ollie, my dog, who has decided to say hello as well. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ollie. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. <laughs> Camera Pro were very nice to work with Fujifilm to get us a GFX 100 Mark II to have a look at for the last week before launch, just to put it through its paces. Yep. I've taken it on a variety of shoots. I've done some commercial work with it. I've done some fashion tests. I've tested some video stuff. Um, and also as part of that, we got Gabe into the studio here. Uh, this is part of it, but yeah. uh, we had a brief. Would you like to tell everyone kind of what the idea was you came up with? Yeah, uh, so I came up with the idea to use the camera on a studio setting uh, with a dancer, so we could add some movement, like some inspiration of movement, uh, which would require a little bit of low light, so we could do some tests with the autofocus, uh, as well as just the overall feeling of the camera. And um, we invited a professional dancer, we had the studio set up for it and we did a few shots that we're going to probably be showing you guys as, as we go. Yep. So what's your background with Fujifilm? Um, you've been shooting for a while. Um, Fujifilm was my second brand once I started into photography. Second brand, sorry. And uh, I shot with Fuji for the past six, seven years. Um, I've never owned the GFX system. I've been with the XT system. Uh, love it. Have you shot? Have you shot with GFX before? I have shot with GFX before. Yep. I have shot with the 100S. I have shot with the 50R, mm -hmm. and uh, the 100S. I even tested it in some pretty weird conditions that I would say that are not what GFXs are made for, yep. and it still did quite quite impressively well. Um, but yeah, the Mark II it impressed me quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie about that. So, so let's before you give it, give <laughs> I'm it away. I'm getting too excited. Let's talk about what your expectations were. So you've shot. I, I shoot with the GFX 100s as a daily driver. I guess that's my main camera. Um, so I had expectations. I guess of I know what it's like to shoot with the GFX 100s every day. And then obviously you come from the XT system, but you've shot with the GFX as well. Mm -hmm. So what did you think when when you heard of like a GFX 100 Mark II? Were you thinking, I hope it has faster autofocus or like, you know, what were the main things? First thing, fast autofocus. Mm -hmm. That was for sure. I was like, I was even talking to some of my colleagues at work. I was like, oh, I wish they could make a medium format camera that had a much better autofocus than the ones that I already have. And that was one of my top priorities there. Uh, the handling of the camera is one that I kind of like, but Fujifilm has always been really good towards that. I, f I feel like they do pay a lot of attention in certain details like quality of EVF, uh, the actual ergonomics of the camera, uh, which we already be been seeing with the LCD screens on top since the X-H1, you know. Uh, so that was one of the other things. Um, the usability per se, I think if you already shot with Fujifilm, the menu system is pretty intuitive. Uh, I have no problems with it and I felt that that was something that I was expecting to be the same and it was. Same, feels feels the same, yeah. looks the same. So those autofocus was probably one of my high priorities there. Um, color, I've always think that they try to keep the color pattern that they have and they, they did, which is great. I love that color and yeah. How about yourself? What do you expect in the most? I was the same. I kind of really love shooting GFX. I probably use it uh, for what most people don't. You know, I shoot a lot of fashion work, but a lot of location shooting with it. Um, I just love the whole process of shooting slower. So I came from another vendor, you know, had great autofocus, all these things. And some people see that as a sacrifice to move across to a medium format system. But I thought at the time, I was like, well, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for better color science and a bunch of different things. So I was just hoping that it was gonna bring it up to par with some of the other flagship cameras in the full frame market, because I feel like that would be a very compelling package to to have you know obviously there's a price point with it but yeah you know if, if you have the the image quality that's undeniably better than the other four frame flagships but with better 
performance, their performance. then that's a pretty hard thing to beat. So and yeah, yeah, I think that that's what it was missing probably to bring other industry of photography towards the large format uh, systems that maybe now we're gonna start seeing. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I know you were really impressed. So, so just to give people context, this was the studio we shot in. Uh, there's natural light, so there's windows all along the sides here. Um, but we shot at night, so we probably started shooting when the sun had already gone down a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And we basically had the idea of um, Gabe wanted to shoot some kind of long exposure using a mixture of continuous and rear curtain flash, just to be really specific as what we were trying to do. We'll put some examples up on the screen as we're talking, but I guess the thing that we both freaked out about, there were two main things. Mm. So one was the autofocus picking up in very, very, very low light. light. You know, we had, uh, we're lighting ourselves with a 300D uh, aperture light here. That was on 1%. Yeah. So it was completely pitch black. It was on 1% and it was on her body. I don't think it, it was, was on her face. Yeah, it was around her body, not on her face. Her face was almost like, I would say two, two and a half stops under exposed. If not more, maybe. Not more. It was just literally a shadow and it was still picking up, eye picking out of up focus. like the eye out of focus spot on the bank. Very impressive. Yeah. And that's, you know, with a non the lens we were using was actually a the new lens. I think we can talk about it now because this will be yeah. out after the NDA, but there's a brand new 55 mil 1.7 lens, which is in its own right, very stellar, <laughs> very, very magical lens, but I'll talk about that later. Um, and it's not an LM lens, so it's not a linear motor. motor. So it's not supposed to be particularly fast at focusing according to Fujifilm's kind of naming convention. And it didn't really miss. Nope, they kept it. He kept it really well and that's another thing uh, some of our colleagues spoke about it's like sometimes you can make a body that has a very fast auto focus but the lens won't keep it up with it yeah and they some of them were worried that some of the lenses wouldn't keep it up with it and so far if non uh, non-linear motor uh, lenses could keep it up with it then i think they should be fine yeah, yeah. the performance should be great <laughs> exactly. across the range yeah the other thing to note, I guess you tried burst mode. So, you yeah. know, I've tried shooting burst on the 100S. It's very clunky because you've only got normal SD cards. So obviously there's a lot of data mm -hmm. trying to be the buffer can only do, physics can only, do you know, so do so much. Yeah. Um, but you were able to shoot burst mode uh, and the autofocus didn't suffer it either. It didn't suffer either, yes. Uh, I think with burst mode, I would like to try some other situations as well, especially outdoors. I think you would perform even better because when you're in low light, there is uh, maybe a slight delay with the focus to, to be able to shoot again. Whereas I think if you're on an outdoor where you have a little bit more light, it's not such a challenging moment, you will be able to reach those five uh, frames per second or 10 frames per second. That's what the camera is offering eight, at the moment. Eight frames per second, eight frames per mechanical, second. I'm pretty yeah. sure. So you, I was trying five frames per second here and I was getting sometimes three, four, which is pretty good. Uh, but as again, we were shooting like very low light, uh, very hard to maintain the focus. So the worst conditions and it didn't really exactly, fail. Exactly, it didn't fail. So I'm pretty sure that it's a pretty exciting camera for different genres now, I would say, yeah. So what would you say to someone who's currently, I'll, I'll be as uh, politically correct as I can, <laughs> someone who, because both of us have shot other manufacturers, yep. we, we've previously shot other vendors, someone who's looking, who's sitting in the full frame land, you know, they're looking to take it to the next level, they're looking to look at a medium format. Do you think, in your opinion, is it a worthy rival now um, with the updates to a flagship camera full frame equivalent uh camera. most definitely um the in my opinion medium format has a very unique look that 35 cannot do uh some people might say it's not true but once you pay a lot of attention to the image that it make you can see it yeah i think it's that graduation of the yeah. focus roll off it really yeah it's, uh, it's uh, one thing i like to say might be like my my opinions about it it's almost like you can see around your subject almost like you can see around subject which is pretty interesting um so i would love to see other areas of photography even like sports photography to try uh i wouldn't say it's exactly for that it's definitely not made for it but i think the image that would come out of it would be amazing be amazing uh i've seen some uh for uh, cars already like which is pretty good 
uh, like uh, usually commercial big big brands would be using that quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, it's a fantastic camera, and uh, we can probably show a little bit more of our photo shoot and some of the images as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. Thanks, mate. I think that's pretty much covered it. And yeah. Yeah, um, I'm really thankful for the opportunity from Camera Pro to take it for a spin. Yeah. And I'm sure I'll, I'll definitely one of the first to get the camera. Look, I, I'm, I'm lucky as well. <laughs> I had my fun with it. Uh, it's an amazing camera, amazing design. Um, I think once we be able to show you guys a little bit more of the camera, you see the details that we, we kind of uh, talking about, especially in the body build. It's a very unique body build. Yeah. I haven't seen that before. Uh, in traditional cameras. And feels great in the hands. Feels great in the hands. Yeah. There's a few uh, elements of the grip that are very different than what we have uh, now with the on the market. Uh, yeah. Even so the quick buttons on the trigger as well. Yeah. There's the three quick, button. quick programmable buttons above the um, trigger, which is like groundbreaking. Mm. I don't know why other people haven't done it, but yeah, yeah really, exactly. really cool. Um, yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Lars. No worries. Yeah. And uh, we'll bring you more content about the GFX soon.